Hi everyone, I recently had the question on how to output the value of web request control to a column in SharePoint or Office 365 when we don't have that connected to property on the web request control. Now this is Nintex New Responsive Forms for Office 365, so um, if you're familiar with this, it doesn't actually have a connected to property. Uh, so the title column does have connected to, so that means that the value entered into the control go back, goes back to the column, whereas the web request um, doesn't now um there's there's a reason why we chose not to do this um so because the web request is actually an object by that i mean it has multiple properties so if we go to variables for a moment and if i type in web request um there's a couple of controls that i've got we'll come back to later uh but you'll see there's a web request object so it's an object so it has multiple properties and sharepoint doesn't know what an object is now if you're if you spend some time with SharePoint and Nintex, you would actually probably argue with me and say, well, a list lookup or a uh, people picker is an object and so on and so forth. Now, possibly you could argue that, yes, it is a, a um, an object. However, SharePoint does some strange things and they don't actually store it as an object. They store it as a string. So as an example, I've got a, a list lookup control here. So this is connected to the, the fruit uh, lookup column and that's actually looking up a a list called fruit it's got three options in there so now if we were to drag on a label underneath that fruit uh, lookup column uh, lookup control and then we output um, fruit for instance let's have a look and see how they actually store the data so I select apples and SharePoint store it as one semicolon hash apples not just apples and that's so they can identify the specific SharePoint item with the value of selected. So um, if we were to take that same model with web request control, if you selected something in here, you wouldn't get Charizard, you get one semicolon hash Charizard. And I don't think anyone really wants to see that. And we get into more quirky behaviors if we then said, okay, we're going to put out one semicolon hash Charizard and when you look at it in SharePoint, it doesn't look very really user-friendly and maybe someone wants to change that in quick edit. A lot of problems arise. So we chose not to do this and there is a way around this. If you wanted to just output the value into SharePoint list to have a view on there so you can do some reporting or dashboarding or whatever it might be. So let's go back to the designer. Let's delete fruit for a moment. Let's get rid of our label for a moment. Now I've got a web request control here and we've got a preview and it's a bunch of Pokemon. Now I, I select Charizard. Now when I look at this, it's looking up the name of the Pokemon and it's also the URL. So the URL is kind of like the, maybe the primary key perhaps or something unique to that. Now um, you don't always want to show that URL to everyone. Um, Perhaps you want to show it in your list. So how do we get these two values out to uh, the SharePoint columns? Well, I've made two columns here. So web request uh, label and web request value. So then that means that I've got two controls, or these are the two uh, SharePoint columns that I can write values back to. So I've got those two hidden here, label and value hidden here. So then if I just clean this up for a moment, if I wanted to put some data back into the SharePoint column, then we could come through here and say um, set fields or whatever it might be. And you might say um, if a field is, is, is populated or whatever it might be, and I could get smart and I could say uh, for the web request, web request uh, object dot uh, label is not equal to um, nothing blank whatever, you could have string length, whatever you like. Uh, if that returns true, so what I'm saying is uh, the label of the web request, what has been selected, is not um, empty. That's a yes. It's a yes. Uh, or you could do something else. You could say something like if, if the title is filled, for instance. It's really up to you. I'm, I'm using the web request label if it's if it's if it's uh, longer than nothing, which is yes, uh, then I'm going to say set the web request label and set the web request value. Uh, set the values here and here and set insert and we've got our um, form variables. So let's just delete those and create those again. Let's explain those. 
So I can create a variable and I can say web request label. So I um so those previous ones I'd actually made before. So I can say web request web request dot label and that's a string so it's just gonna go straight into that field. And then we can come in here, we could say I want another variable, but you don't have to, you don't have to have variables, you could say web request uh, dot value. Make it even easier on yourself. And so let's get rid of that one and say and say uh, web request uh, where are we? web request dot label. So if you don't need to reuse something, don't make it a variable. Just put it straight in your formula like that. And so we go create, and I can go back and clean up my variables I had before. So now, so just to explain this, I make a selection here. If it's greater than blank, it's going to say, okay, get the two properties from this and put them into these two hidden hidden fields. These two hidden fields are both connected to their um, relative columns and the data is going to get written back to the SharePoint list. So let's publish that and let's go back to here. Uh, refresh for a moment, make sure we get everything happening. Press new and okay here we go. So I'm going to say hello world. I'm going to select Charizard. You don't know anything different and you press submit. And what we see here is the value of Charizard coming back and the URL. So um, that's how you can actually get the values out of a complex control like a web request control. So as I said before, we've got a web request control here. He's got two properties and you want to get those out. Rather than sending out ID semicolon hash value or label, we can get those through either variables or what we did here was just got them through the formulas, through the formulas here. And we populate the, the, the fields of connected controls to, to put those values back into here. So I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, if it doesn't make sense, or if you'd like to hear me talk about something else relating to Nintex Forms, certainly send me a message, leave a comments in the comments section below, or um, you can find me in community. Cheers.